So today I'm on the North Yorkshire coast photographing seals. So this is a great place to come and see seals, but there are some caveats, as there usually are, which we'll get onto in a bit. But um, yeah, you've got common seals and grey seals down here, and there's quite a lot of them about. You know, I think about 400 or so tend to be on the colony. You get two breeding seasons, one sort of in the summer and one in the winter. So I was lucky enough to come down here in December when the grey seals had just been puffing and um, just so happened that I turned up the day after some were born and uh, there was a marshal down here telling everyone to sort of keep their distance from the newborns because you can have a detrimental effect to uh, the relationship with the mother if you get too close you can scare them off and all sorts of things so uh, but he told me where I could go and sort of suggested where I could get my shots from so I managed to get a couple of shots of these uh, brand new baby seal. Come up here again now just to try and get a few nice shots, a few different shots. There's sort of juveniles and there's a couple lobbing about on the beach over there beside me. Leave me voice down because there's a lot of uh, seals about behind me as you might be able to see and I don't want to disturb them too much. What are we trying to avoid? We don't want to scare them away from their place because although they're, you know, quite blubbery and protected, actually, if they do a lot of, they're sort of um, trying to get away from you on land, they can hurt themselves and that's not what you want. Eye contact, first sign that they've spotted you. Secondly, will be sort of a, um, a change in a position, I think, and then like they will growl at you as well. Um, so really you want to be avoiding this as much as you can tonight. I've come down here and I've managed to get some nice shots and I've managed to get some nice video and I've managed to do it all without disturbing them at all. And you know it's quite easy down here because you've got plenty of rocks and boulders and you can just hide behind them and slowly creep a bit closer. But you know keep your distance as well, put your long lens on and you don't have to get so close. Again, <coughs> being mindful is the key here. It's one of these places, yeah, it's got quite popular and that has had a little bit of an effect on numbers from year to year, particularly in lockdown, but I think numbers are on the way back up again. So that's mainly due to the volunteers who are down here manning it, making sure people aren't getting too close and disturbing them. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, let's protect these places. We've not got a huge amount of them left in England. And we've just got to try and do our best to leave the animals be really observe them you know be the um anomaly in their environment not try and sort of make our environment and our ways fit into where they are just try and stay unnoticed So in terms of challenges, when I was photographing them, <coughs> um, it's broken down into two bits I suppose for me, which was the technical issues and the sort of behavioural issues. Technically, well they're not too bad really because obviously you've got to limit yourself as to how close you can get, so you use a long lens. Um, I did run into a bit of issues in that I'm a bit limited now on when I can get out because I'm back on back at work full time after furlough. Yeah, it means I can only get out at certain times. So I 
found that some of the days that I had spare, it wasn't the best weather, but what can you do? So it was quite, well, I say it wasn't the best weather, it was quite good actually, because it was stormy, uh, rainy a little bit, the sea was rough. So yes, it was fighting the light. So I was often shooting at sort of 3,200 ISO um, and quite slow shutter speeds, but they're big animals, they're quite slow. It's not like you're photographing a little bird. You don't have to get very close. So actually for this, I um, used a tripod for a lot of it because it just helped me get steady shots on slow shutter speeds. Also, as technical, I'm going to class it as technical, even though it's sort of field craft, is approaching them. So as you, I don't know if you can see down there behind me, but it's sort of a boulder strewn beach that they're, or not beach, boulder strewn coastline that they're on. So obviously if you don't want to disturb them, the best way of getting close is just using the boulders to hide behind and gradually get a little bit closer, a little bit closer and uh, I managed to do it without disturbing them, which was good. themselves out of the sea and essentially come to land to digest food, relax, sleep, uh, fight and um, so actually a lot of the time they're spent laying on their backs, eyes closed, sort of looking like they're smiling. Um, so it's a case of sort of sticking, I sort of plonked myself somewhere <coughs> where I had a view of a few of them and just waited until some sort of behaviour happened really and that could have been as little as a scratch or sort of a peer about as they've heard someone you know another seal coming out of the sea so trying to be there and predict them things will give you a few more interesting shots Same story for me really though, <coughs> it's, uh, I really enjoy the photography side of it but it's being able to get out to these sort of spots and just spend a lot of time here really, <coughs> with a bit of a goal in mind, it does keep you busy. But it's such a beautiful spot looking out over the North Sea, but you really feel like you're sort of part of, of their world really and you just immerse yourself in it and enjoy the experiences. It's, uh, you know, it's a good way to spend a few hours. It has been difficult. <clears throat> getting back on to this after furlough, which is why it's taken me a little bit longer. Um, just trying to fit things in around sort of children and work again is a bit much, but it makes these, these moments even more special. So thanks to everyone who's liked my videos and subscribed to my channel so far, it's much appreciated. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, it's all much appreciated and yeah. So here I am down at my local river and uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to say that I didn't say in the actual video when I was there. So the sort of shots I had in mind going down there, um, like I'm no expert in seals at all, so I've done the usual reading up on them that I like to do before I go into these sort of places. And um, you know, seals are most active underwater, they pull themselves out to, to rest and what have you, so for me it was trying to get some interesting conditions. Um, I did really want some good light, so I made sure I went back down when we got a bit of a clear forecast. And um, that gave me the opportunity to sort of 
shoot on higher shutter speeds for clearer shots. I could close my aperture down to f8, which I always like to do on the Sigma 150-600. And yeah, you know, there was a bit of opportunity for backlighting and stuff like that, so it made it a little bit more of an interesting shoot. Um, but yeah, the key was that they lay there quite still for quite some time, and then they'll all of a sudden have these like big stretches and yawns and all the rest of it. And I ended up getting really into trying to get these sort of almost abstract shots of the seals as they twisted themselves into these strange formations. And um, so that's what I spent quite a bit of time concentrating on. Um, and I think some of the results were really good. There was somewhere, you know, we got the inside of their mouths and they were sort of almost unrecognisable, but, you know, still very seal-like in their nature. And I found that a good sort of exercise in, it was almost like a, an element of seal photograph as opposed to a seal photograph in itself. Also, for this video, <coughs> I had a bespoke music track made from my mate Andy at Groundbird Studios. Uh, he basically took a lot of sounds that were found at the coast, sort of waves and seals, and mixed them together into an audio track and fed them through his analogue synth to make this uh, yeah, audio track that you've heard over the video. If you're interested in how he did it, then have a check out of his behind the scenes video. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below. Nice one. So there we go, that was it for this one. I'm a little bit disappointed in how long it took me to get this one out actually, because um, I thought I'd got it sorted and that when I went back to work, I'd be able to keep sort of firing them out at the same pace as I had been, but that's changed a little bit. And I actually wanted to speed that pace up a little bit. So I've got to look back, look into how I do these things, but you know, I don't want to put too much pressure on because life is busy, <coughs> but um, I probably will, you know, as well as being a wildlife photographer, I'm a bit more of an outdoorsy photographer all round really. And, um, you know, we're in the, in the times of the Milky Way core being very visible in the UK. So I'm probably going to try a bit of astrophotography within the next couple of weeks, providing we get clear nights and stuff like that. So there might be a little bit of change to what comes up on the channel, but there'll still be more wildlife stuff to come on. But it's just, I do like to spend a bit of time doing that wildlife stuff I don't I don't really like the one day out and just see what you get I like to spend a few days out piecing bits together and trying to make something a bit more uh, full-bodied so <clears throat> I might try and do a few landscape ones in between where I can plan them a bit more to get the shot and then work on the bigger projects whilst I'm also working on those if that makes any sense at all uh, and anyone might not even care anyway but anyway again thanks for all the likes and watches on uh, YouTube um, you know it is really appreciated it's uh, yeah it's, it's far more than I I thought I'd get really so I'm, I'm happy as a man called Lawrence um, and yeah just you know keep having fun out there and keep being mindful and keep looking after nature and then hopefully we can all have fun in it eh? all right until next time happy shooting